don't get new baited into using your E long range in this situation as well. The same way you don't want to get baited. Like, again, that's going to be the new bait. That's going to be what I'm looking for. Players who don't use the movement speed on their Q. Players who use their E at max range or use their jump immediately. Um, players that use their ultimate immediately. Like, but that's going to be this guy's not good at Lilia evidence. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down Lilia and trying to help you understand like what archetype is she, whether you should play her, and what's the likely way for her to be built. All right, so for the breakdown of Lilia, we're going to look through each of her abilities and understand what do those abilities bring to the table. And in that way, we can decide um, how is she going to interact with the line of scrimmage and how is she going to be played and ultimately how is she going to be built. I skipped to the abilities, but really the first thing to identify here is the attack range is 325. So she is not like a melee range champion. I think already I've noticed people talking about her as if she's like um, like a Darius, like an in-your-face juggernaut champion. When she doesn't, she definitely doesn't need to be, and probably ultimately shouldn't be. Uh, you should probably use the entirety of your range, just like you should with most champions. The, the range of a champion is like extremely important because if your if your attack range on your uh on your champion is like 100, like uh, like 125, I think is the lowest from most melee champions, then your abilities, like the way your champion functions, is gonna be should be stronger on the back end. In the longer your ranges, the your abilities should be weaker because you have to. There's like an allotment points to, to decide like how good is your champion point, or how good is your champion gonna be, and your attack range is a significant portion of that. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, now they go to the abilities. Her passive is essentially just damage, and it's mainly a, an ability that. I guess, and to some extent, would be a burst ability, but obviously isn't enough to give her burst. Just because an ability has an archetype doesn't really mean that champion is that archetype. What, what really makes whether or decides whether a champion is truly that archetype is whether they can do the job of that archetype very reliably. So, for example, with burst, you're not really a burst champion unless you could sit in a bush, wait for someone, and blow their ass up, right? So. Just because this has a burst quality to it doesn't mean she's a burst champion. But in reality, like all, all this really does is do damage, so it is a burst archetype. Um, although, keep in mind, like abilities like this are very much things that enable a different archetype, as opposed to like things that do percentage damage or like, do specifically movement speed kind of uh, stats are normally built to enable the archetype of their other abilities as opposed to give her, her that archetype. So that's why it's like this. Um, if we look at her Q, it's a, another burst ability. It, again, isn't like significant burst. The AP ratio is pretty low. The base damage is pretty low. Uh, the important thing about her Q, other than applying her passive, is that it gives bonus movement speed. And that movement speed is, is really important because that archetype is the dive archetype, and it's uh, and as well as the backline archetype. Like movement speed enables both both of these. It also technically enables uh, split pushing as well. Um, and so that that's really important to identify here because this is this is like how she's gonna keep on the targets, right? Um, especially if you can use your Q on the minions and run through and attack people. All right, something also worth noting with this ability and kind of the, the, my prediction of how she can be played is for those of you who are new to the game I remember um, on the Thorn you used to always talk about how most people that are, are playing League or actually fairly new to the, the scene so they don't really remember the old school stuff and I just know from coaching people that not very many of the people I, I coach are from back you know pre-season 4 maybe even, maybe not even pre-season 6 and so you guys might not remember old Soraka this thing. <laughs> um, and Old Soraka had a spammable cooldown that was an, a range that's right around 500 that had a 40% AP ratio and low base stats. V much, very, very similar, as you can tell. And she was played not as a tank. Um, but a, as a juggernaut, and we'll go over that a little bit later in terms of build. But I wanted to point that out for those of you who do remember um, old school AP Soraka. That I I actually look at L Lilia very similarly to that. 
and the, the rest of you guys, maybe you can, I can maybe put up a clip of, of what old, old uh, Soraka used to do. All right, well, if we move on to oh, her W, which is a dash ability, obviously going to enable her d to do a dive. Um, again, it's a technically a burst ability because it's just a damage ability, not enough to really make her burst, of course. Um, the significant portion about understanding this is going to be the 200%. That's not that important when you think about like that you're not really going to want to build a ability power on this champion. However, when it comes to early game ganks and like early game fights, that's having you know double on an ability is pretty significant, and that we'll get into why I, how we can understand that and like utilize that when I talk about sequencing later in the video. Swirl seed. So her E again. Technically a burst ability. It's going to help her be a backline champion because it's going to slow. Um, obviously going to help her dive to some extent. And because she does percentage AP damage depending on items that you have, it's given the range. It will be a poke ability as well. And then we go on to her ultimate, which I'm still having trouble whether I am going to decide whether this is truly an engage ability or just a pick, pick ability. I do think you're going to have enough, I think I'm leaning on the side of where it's going to be reliable enough to be able to engage um, consistently. And again, it's going to be a burst ability as well. Uh, the most important part of this is that if you can start your fights, if you can enable team fights, like, engage is probably the most influential archetype in the game. It's game defining, it's the easiest way of, if a team makes a mistake, engaging and taking advantage of the fact that they, that they mispositioned is the most powerful thing in the game really in terms of archetypes. Something to note about the way that Lilia is designed, other than the fact that it's similar to the Soraka's uh, old star call, is that if you watch the previous video on archetypes at the end where I talk about Amumu compared to Malphite, it's very similar to Amumu where people thinking that she's going to be like a tank just straight in the face all the time because of the way she's designed, you have to think, she's not actually necessarily forced to being a, a tank, or I guess I should say, she's not being enabled to be a tank. Because she's, in the same way that Amumu, Amumu has percentage damage, um, a dash, a uh, AOE damage ability that does, again, percentage max health, just like her, she does. And that has a spammable AOE ability. These are very similar archetypes for both these champions. It's just that they're packaged in completely different ways. Um, but the way they play is going to be somewhat similar because of um, the archetypes being very tied together between these two champions. Uh, and there, that's the reason I have this up because I, I really think of like Amumu as Shaman and then Lilia as the Skyform Shaman. Like that, it actually it's very similar. Lilia is basically just like an updated, um, more modern version of Amumu. I feel. Now, Amumu's abilities are, are naturally going to be less uh, or lackluster um, when it comes to the normal abilities because his ultimate's such an, an incredible ultimate that you can't let these abilities be as good as another champion's abilities and then also give them the best ultimate, right? And so it's it's reasonable that her abilities are, are better because his ultimate's better. But I do want to make that comparison that nothing really forced, like, his abilities don't make him a tank. Like, 3%, 3% on top of 2 is not why Amumu is a tank at all. Uh, he's a tank because you, in order to play use his abilities effectively, we pretty much have to build tank um, to make sure we can actually survive in that range. That or you go full on burst, which can work at some ranks, but not, not the best thing, obviously. Um, but the point being that Amumu is not inherently the tank the same way that Malphite is inherently a tank. You, you build him tank to kind of utilize his abilities. And I think it's similar with Lilia, where if you build her tank, it's because you want to, not because she necessarily has, like, she's not tank, more tanky than two, 2,000 HP Caitlyn and 2,000 HP Lilia with the same items is the same amount of tank, if that makes sense. Um, it's only because she has um, shorter range that you're going to be encouraged to build uh, in a tankier way so you can survive. Uh, and I'm going to show multiple different builds uh, again at the end of the video here. But I do think that's a very important concept if you want to think about different uh, 
concepts between, or like theories between different champions and their items. All right, on to the Leah builds. Now, the first thing I, I think about after I look at their abilities uh, and their ratios and like really how, how they can be played like compared to that Soraka, compared to the Mumu, is like what is the goal, like what are the goals, to, stats to get out of your items and your runes um, to utilize the champion, right? And I broke it down in kind of different ways um, in terms of whether you want to intentionally try to play Lilia as a tank, uh, as, a, as a juggernaut, which probably should be pretty flexible. Um, I put backline on here as well and support and jungle's on there but jungle has to do with tank and juggernaut just whether you build the jungle item or not so the stats that you're, you really want to build on Lilia are going to be cooldown reduction which is true for pretty much any champion that has a low cooldown spammable ability is they want it to be even lower cooldown like Skarner, um, e, uh, Evelyn like pretty much if you have a low cooldown ability that's supposed to be the bread and butter of your champion CDR becomes like extremely important for that champion, um, especially when it's so tied into the, her archetype being uh, or enabling her to dive or um, disengage slash well not truly disengage but back up. Actually, that actually reminds me when I was talking about her ultimate. What I should have mentioned is that I'm not I'm I'm always talking about the proactive archetypes normally, but while I was like on the fence of whether she's engaged, I, I do think she's engaged. Um, she's definitely disengaged. Like, you always have to remember, like, disengage and, and pill are much more easily attained than pick and engage. Because when you are, naturally when you're peeling or you're trying to disengage, your opponents are kind of funneling, funneling into you and it's much easier for you to land your ability. For example, um, like it's very hard for Braum to truly initiate a fight with his ultimate, but it's very easy for him to use a his ultimate defensively as people are trying to funnel into his team and then get the team away. So just keep that in mind. Now, the other ability or um, stat that you really want on the champion is going to basically just be like things like utility. Like we want to stray away from noob traps which are going to be building AP on a champion that has 30% uh, AP ratios and 40% AP ratios. No AP ratio on making this percentage go higher. So we, we don't really want AP. And I, I wanted to show that here. Where if you're only getting 30% of like the value, and so 1,600 gold and 28 total, and you're only getting 30% of more than half percent, half of the value of the, of the item, you, you're going to have to really believe that the effectiveness of using the active of hourglass is like extremely high value to to make up for the fact that you're getting extremely low value out of the ability power um and so you're gonna see i'm gonna stray away from items that are ap heavy before i go into builds i will mention like runes uh briefly and her runes in in terms of being a tank like jungle and, and you're not in lane i think grass makes a lot, a lot of sense for lane um for top and middle which i'll talk about top and middle in a moment um, but really her runes aren't that clear cut because she doesn't have a keystone that's great for her. You can see that Amumu players still take Aftershock even though if you miss the Q, it doesn't, you can't really utilize it. Um, whereas on Lilia, you'd have to land the E to use Aftershock. And so it's kind of awkward. But if you wanted like a base runes, I would use these for now. But I would just keep up with uh, something like Lolitics on after like a few days of the patch and check what what's working what's not working that's how i'd figure out uh the runes really all right so on to uh Lilia builds i think the general build that you're going to see is going to be something along these lines where you're trying to get uh cdr and health and utility just like i mentioned previously and so i think if there's anything that's going to be a core i'm thinking more so of the way that sejuani's core was when she was first uh played unfortunately we can't do the old school ap soraka build because well the ancients isn't in the game Abyssal Scepter is in, in the game, and so we can't do the cool run around, heal, and kill everyone at the same time build. Uh, it doesn't work like that anymore, but so we're going to have to work with the items that we have now, and I try to replicate that with the items that are available now, but those things messed up the game balance, and I think that's why they're removed, and so no items really fit those criteria the same way that, or the same way now as they used to, but yeah, anyway, I think that Doing either a mix from tank and juggernaut is going to be the most likely way of playing this champion. Um, where if you're jungle, you build Cinderhulk uh, into Wormogs, very similar to Sidrani when she was meta. Uh, and this would, could be this could very easily end up being somewhat of a core for this champion. Now, the 
great thing about Lilia is that and just champions in this archetype, again, very similar to a Moo Moo, is that when you are an AP champion and and you're also have the tank slash juggernaut uh, capabilities, you are extremely good against AP champions. Like if you get to build um, like Abyssal Mass and Merc Treads and just run at people with very, very, very cost efficient items, you're going to be a problem. So she's going to be a great champion as a, a, count, a counter to AP champion, the same way they the same way that Amumu and Zach are. Now, the reason why there's a bunch of items here, I, I'm only really caring about like three items. Like anything past three items is not going to be your core. You're not going to get in most of your game, so it's not really not that important. I only really care about the first few items. And so again, generally, these are going to be. I think these will be your first three items um, if you're jungling. And I think if you're not jungling, it's going to be something like this. Although it's going to obviously vary by what you're playing against. If you're playing against um, heavy AP or heavy AD, you might want to change this around. And if you're popping the hell off, you're probably going to, going to end up going Cinderhawk, Warmogs, and um, I can't remember, Righteous Glory. And I guess I'll explain that for a little bit. Like When you're snowballing in League, you almost always, as, a, as this archetype, you almost always want health or utility and normally speed. Uh, that's that's true as, as well if you're playing a burst champion. It's like you pretty much just need to be fast enough to catch up to people, and then have enough damage to kill them. Um, that's like that's build theory. I'll eventually make a video on that soon. Let me know if you really want that. Um, but yeah, I, I do think these are going to be the items you're going to see uh, naturally out of the, out of this champion. If you are going to attempt a player in a backline manner, um, I think this is probably the route you're going to go. Where if you're a jungle, you're probably not even going to finish the jungle item because you, I don't think you could afford to. It's not like you don't want the AP, and you kind of like in the jungle you don't get as much gold. So I think finishing the jungle item is probably going to be a mistake if you end up trying to do like a, a, an immediate backline. And what I mean by that is if you're on the backline archetype, your intention is to actually use the the full range of her 480 range of her um, her Q that you're going to spam, and actually try to not fully go in the same way the same way that old Soraka did again you can't do this as well as you as you could have previously because we don't have the same kind of items before but I think if you're gonna you were going to try it it would have it would have to be through this route you don't want like GLP you don't want uh, like gunblade or you don't want the items that give a bunch of AP because first of all I think the rally is gonna achieve the same purpose if you're trying to be a backline champion um, and do damage is having the allies and the, the Leandres are already going to do the same job. But more importantly, those items give like so much value in terms of AP, in terms of cost efficiency, like I showed you on the Hourglass earlier. And they're not really giving you the, what you truly need. Like you're, they're not cost effective. I guess it's a simple way of saying that. Uh, there's a, and I also put um, the reason why this is here. It's because the AP or the magic penetration on the her the five percent max HP damage, the magic penetration is going to be the real important stat. Like, she wants magic penetration much more than she wants um, actual ability power. Support is going to be like very, like, just standard support. Um, just run in, have max CR, spam your abilities. Uh, it really isn't that great, but I can see it being possible. I'll say that. I can see it being a possible option. Um, and then if you're doing well, eventually you build like, like this. Um, but again, I only really care about the beginning items because that's going to be the most relevant on, wh on whether you have the success on that champion. Is like how well can you perform on that champion in their archetype in the first like 25 minutes of the game. Like, that's and I would say like a lot of it's going to be in the first like 15 minutes of the game of how how much do you influence your, the game on those items that you have that, at that time. And you can you can kind of see here. I'll show you on this website real fast. Like normally, like you're getting especially as a jungler, you're not getting your third item until like 27 minutes in the game and I do know that the lower rank you are the longer games tend to be so maybe I'm just it's a little skewed maybe I should think of like maybe one item longer for you guys um, but at the higher ranks like I don't expect to play games where I build more than three items as for playing Lilia in a lane top top versus middle because I think that's the main thing you're going to compare it to you always have to think about whether your champion can survive in the long lane of top like the main difference between top and middle is that is the distance, right? And can you survive being pushed up in that distance uh, in a way more often away from your jungler? So it's just more dangerous. So you, mainly the thing you have to think about is like how 
likely are they to survive a gank, right? And Lilia has that movement speed, which could be nice, especially if you have a way to hit off of to run away. But I don't really think it's enough. Um, again, she, her she has like a little jump. Like I don't think she's that, and she's not going to be that tanky, especially earlier in the game. So I think top lane is going to be like a hard ask. Um, those of you who are remembering old Soraka would would remember that she was played top. But you have to also remember that she built well well the ancients and was full HP um, all the time and was much more annoying to kill um, than uh, Lalia is going to be in terms of like just running at her, right? Now, mid lane, however, being a shorter lane, I think it's going to be possible. Uh, in terms of the matchups you'd want to play, I I mean, ideally, you, again, you want to play against AP champions because your champ, Lalia is going to be very good when building magic resist. So if they're playing magic, uh, AP jungle, AP middle, um, with any, either AP top or support or both, then she's going to be great. Like she's going to be incredibly good. Um, and and in those lanes, you're not your intention really is going to be that like kill your enemy laner. Uh, it's going to be more so. Let me bring this up. It's going to be more so about once you have the magic resist, especially depending on what runes you end up taking and whether to corrupt the potion, you can take some shots. It's going to be about like walking in the wave, pushing the damn wave, and then utilizing the fact that you could ro rotate. Um, something I was talking about a little bit uh, on stream here was that on if you push with again she has a bunch of AOE so assuming they don't nerf it's her her ability power to champ or the minions is lower which I could see happening if she, if she gets too good in lane but before they do that um, you could push your lane with the AOE especially if you have the tankiness you have some magic resist uh, again before we could build a fiends but the things like is useless on nowadays um, but yeah you push and then you can start rotating. And if the crab is here, you can utilize the crab by hitting it with your Q and building up Q stacks and getting movement speed for your rotations, which I think would be very, very neat. Especially because the crab gets pushed away from you. So, so long as you position correctly, you can push that crab for a while until you get too too fast for the crab to keep up with you. Um, I was also talking about if, you know, if you're on the red side, you go this way. And if you're on the blue side, you go this way. And depending on the range, you might be able to bait, like press Q on the bottom side rotation like this. Hit maybe like the one raptor they start running out and then hit all the raptors and then start rotating bottom and that's her stacks of her movement speed drop off like one at a time i believe let me confirm i looked at that earlier yeah buy one every one second so that means doing something like this is going to give you that that max um your max movement speed for one second then four you know what i mean so like this kind of rotation trick and using the crabs is going to be, I think, pretty dope. Um, it's also going to be pretty interesting for junglers. Like, for example, pulling out Krugs to here and then queuing, getting your last queue on the last four, and then you try to util utilizing that movement speed to go for a gank very quickly, uh, like a Ramus S kind of gank. Um, her, her Q use is going to be, I think, a very key indicator of like whether you're actually going to be good at this champion. In terms of the movement speed, again, like the archetype of dive is what's being enabled for, uh, out of this queue, and how well you use that is going to be very, uh, like, very key to how well you play the champion, uh, at least at like a higher level, of course. All right, last thing is that we're going to talk about Lilia's sequencing in terms of like what order are you going to do your gank sequencing, and what order are you going to try to engage your team fights because those are going to be the most important uh, factors for both mid, uh, early, and mid game to so carrying the game. So. When you're ganking, then this is general. Her sequencing is actually very straightforward, very similar to like a Moo, very similar to most like most champions, uh, where you are gonna run. Where is it? AJ. Let's say this guy's pushed up. You really want to try to utilize the fact that you have a bunch of movement speed to catch up and run on top of someone, and then use your your W if you need to. But really. The sequence you really want to try to go for, depending on the situation, is to not use your W or E until there's no chance you miss. Um, like you just want to run up to them, use your spam your Q, get that move speed. Especially if they let you on them, and you're gonna get that move speed from just using your Q on them. They're already boned, right? And so, ideally, you jump on, jump on them, and then they they still they feel the need to have to flash. And then after they flash, you throw your E. They're slowed, which almost guarantees that you land your W. And so that would be the ideal scenario that you're going to want to do with um, Lilia is get on top of them, force them to use their flash, 
um, or whatever their escape ability is, then land your E, then get that jump, get the 200%. And that's where the 200% uh, I talked about earlier is. This is going to be very important to do correctly uh, during your level 3 ganks, which is arguably the most important gank, uh, especially when you're trying to get for first blood, right? Um, and so that's the sequence that you're going to want. And obviously, because level 3, they're almost always going to have their flash available. This is what you're going to want to see. Now, let's say if they have no flash, you can play it very differently. You can kind of do whatever you want, really, if they have no flash. Uh, unless you're playing against a dash. Like, let's say this is Edro top for some reason. You still want to play in the, in the same way that I, I mentioned before. Now, when it comes to trying to engage like a team fight, so if you imagine it's like 5v5 middle here, then if you imagine it's 5v5, like the, in theory, what you're going to want to do is throw your E, apply your slow to someone, run at them, jump on them, not use your ultimate immediately, like that's the new bait. If if she works the way that I, I believe based on what I'm reading, and they're marked for three seconds, that means you have time. You have time. Like land, jump on your W. You might even flash at this point and just hit multiple people with with your Q, and then use your ultimate. I, I was talking to a stream earlier about this is similar to when I'm playing Wukong and I I jump in and I press R and my teammate like my Yasuo uses his R immediately, whereas like. Hold up a second, dude. They're still knocked up. If you give me a, couple, a moment, I could walk over and knock up a, a couple other targets, and then we get a much bigger alt. Like, don't blow your R too early. That goes for you too, Yasuo players, if, if you're in my game. Don't use your R immediately. Give me a second. Um, I guess I, I want to mention on the top side gank again that don't get new baited into using your E long range in this situation as well. The same way you don't want to get baited. Like, again, that's going to be the new bait. That's going to be what I'm looking for. Players who don't use the movement speed on their Q. Players who use their E at max range or use their jump immediately. Um, players that use their ultimate immediately. Like, but that's going to be... This guy's not good at Lilia evidence, in my opinion. I, I will say the last thing here is that this champion, ideally, wouldn't want to... I mean, it's going to be weird to try to start the fights with her. Unless you have the Righteous Glory and you can really just run at them. Uh, or unless you have the flank. But... I think this she's gonna be very good when being facilitated by another engaged champion because then it makes her job much 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 easier um, or if someone's making her job easier like in a different way as opposed to them engaging and you following up something like Lulu giving her movement speed um, Galio having Galio in your back pocket so that you know you can just run in um, especially against the AP team Galio Lilia is gonna you know do wonders um, point being is I'm still not confident on how uh, consistent her engage is going to be. Uh, now with Flash, it's going to be free, of course. But uh, I always like thinking about like how, how reliable it's going to be. It's not as if you're going to have Flash all the time. Uh -oh. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Lilia. If you got this far in the video, I assume you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. You know, like the video.